What's up, Falcons Nation? It's your boy, Jew, coming at you with another Atlanta Falcons video. As always, Falcons Nation, rise up. In today's video, I want to give you guys some Atlanta Falcons news, and I also want to talk about right tackle Caleb McGarry. But if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I've done Atlanta Falcons content. Hit that like button for your boy. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys continuing to tune into the channel. Uh, continuing to share out my content on all the social media platforms. Uh, if you would like to follow your boy on Twitter, you can follow me at Jutalk Sports. If you would like to donate to my channel, you can donate to my cash app, which is the dollar sign Jutalk Sports. Or you can hit the like button or excuse me, the thanks button below uh, the channel in the comment section. Um, if you would like to donate to the channel as well. Um, but I do appreciate each and every one of you guys for continuing to donate to the channel. Um, it does go to grow my channel and to improve uh, each each and every one of my videos. Uh, if you would like to also follow your boy on Instagram, you can follow me at you talk sports as well. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So first off in Atlanta Falcons news, the Atlanta Falcons today activated right tackle Kayla McGarry off of the pup list, which is perfect timing for our Atlanta Falcons because we are heading into our first preseason game against the Tennessee Titans uh, this upcoming Friday. So it's uh, definitely good news to get Caleb McGarry back off the pup list. He was our starting right tackle last year, and he will be competing this year with um, Jalen Mayfield and uh, Willie Beavers and the other guys that we have on this roster for that starting right tackle role. So I wish him nothing but the best, um, you know, in competing uh, for that starting role with our Atlanta Falcons uh, this season. Um, also in Atlanta Falcons news, the Falcons did release uh, defensive tackle Deidre Sanat. Um, he actually has been with our Falcons for about three to four seasons. Um, I do feel bad for a guy like Deidre Sanat because to me, he didn't get a fair shake when Dan Quinn was here and Thomas Dimitrov was here with the former regime. I don't believe they gave Deidre Sanat um, a fair opportunity at playing time. He's one of those guys that's been stashed on the roster as a backup for years. Um, last season, he pretty much was on the inactive roster every single week, uh, even though he was healthy. I believe he only appeared in a few games last year for Atlanta Falcons. Um, but I wish him happy trails with his new team. If he does sign with someone else, um, I hope he gets a fair, you know, a fair opportunity um, also, happy trails to Tyler Hall. He was another player that was released today by our Atlanta Falcons. He actually was a rookie last season uh, out of Wyoming. Uh, Tyler Hall was one of those guys that mainly was a special teams player last year, um, but he wore the number 44 last year. A lot of Falcons fans may not recognize a player like Tyler Hall, um, but I only remember uh, him playing at the cornerback position against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. Uh, when a couple players went down with injury in that game, uh, he actually was beat on a streak route or a nine route uh, by Antonio Brown in that first game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home last season. Um, so I wish him nothing but the best um, as well in his future endeavors and with his future team. Uh, hopefully he can sign with someone else. Um, but shout outs to Tyler Hall and happy trails to him as well. Now, today, the Falcons also in Atlanta Falcons news. Uh, did bring in running back uh, Deota uh, Foreman. Uh, he actually played with the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans a little bit last season. Um, I believe this signing is a familiarity type signing uh, by Arthur Smith. Uh, this uh, current regime that we have here is familiar uh, with Deota Foreman um, as a running back. He doesn't have a ton of um, experience because he didn't play a whole lot um, the first, I believe he's been in the league about two or three seasons, uh, first with the, uh, the Texans and now last year with the Titans, I believe they say he appeared in a couple games, uh, with the Titans. Um, but I really believe that he's going to be a long shot to make this roster, uh, due to us having so many running backs on the roster. I believe he's brought in because he knows Arthur Smith's scheme and he knows the system because he did play with the Titans last season. They say he rushed for about 400 yards. And I believe he had about two uh, two touchdowns, but he's a guy that they brought in today or signed today. So shout outs to uh, Deota Foreman. We'll see what he can do in the preseason and see how he competes at training camp. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I had in Atlanta Falcons news. 
Um, there's a lot been a lot of Atlanta Falcons news today. Um, but with that being said, I also want to jump into um, Kayla McGarry. Uh, talk about right tackle Kayla McGarry. This is actually a question or a comment that was left um, by one of my subscribers, Be Strong. Um, I told him I would go ahead and drop uh, this video for him. So I appreciate Be, uh, Be Strong for dropping uh, the question. And his question was, do I believe uh, Kayla McGarry will play better this year under Arthur Smith? And he also wanted to know, do I believe um, is Caleb McGarry a bust? Now, personally, I think that Caleb McGarry is a solid right tackle. I don't believe that Caleb McGarry is a bust. I do believe that Caleb McGarry will play a lot better under Arthur Smith in this new scheme because he's going to be allowed to be aggressive in this scheme. If you remember the last two seasons under Dirk Cutter, um, we have a, um, haven't been an aggressive offensive team as far as running the football and allowing our big guys up front to be aggressive and go forward. It's been a lot of passing, um, a lot of long developing plays, uh, five and seven step drops where these guys are dropping back 40 and 50 times a game um, trying to protect Matt Ryan. And I think this season, uh, Caleb McGarry is a guy that's 6'6", about 310 pounds. So he's definitely a very physical a uh, human being, a very physical man, a very big man. And I think that Caleb McGarry is going to be very, uh, very good this season for our Atlanta Falcons. I do expect him to win the starting right tackle role, even though Jalen Mayfield and Willie Beavers are guys that are behind him. Um, I think that the experience of Caleb McGarry is going to win out in this situation. I do think that Jalen Mayfield is a guy who's more uh, athletic as far as um, you know, pulling and things of that nature on toss plays and on run plays where you're pulling, you know, your guys on the offensive line. I think he's a little bit more agile than a guy like Caleb McGarry. But I think in this situation, um, you can't teach experience. And at this point, Caleb McGarry is going into his third season uh, with our Atlanta, uh, our Atlanta Falcons. And I think that that experience is going to win out uh, when it comes to the battle between Jalen Mayfield and Caleb McGarry. Now, something that could hold Caleb McGarry back would be injuries because when he first came in and was drafted by the Falcons, he had a heart condition. Um, good news is he hasn't had any other problems from my understanding since his rookie year with that heart condition, but he has battled a couple injuries um, over the last couple seasons. But I do think that Kayla McGarry is a solid right tackle. And I do think that he's going to hold on to that right tackle, that starting right tackle position. Now, good thing is Arthur Smith, is a coach that's going to do his due diligence. He's just not going to give or hand uh, Caleb McGarry that starting role. He's going to make him compete in the preseason and that training camp. And he's going to have to go out there and prove his worth, uh, prove that he deserved that starting role. Um, but like I was saying, I do personally believe that Caleb McGarry is the better player at this point because of the experience. You can't teach NFL speed. I do think eventually, Jalen Mayfield will get out there on the field. Personally, if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, I'm starting uh, Jalen Mayfield at the guard position because we've been struggling at that left guard position um, for a couple years now. And I think that Jalen Mayfield would be the perfect uh, player uh, at that guard position for our Atlanta Falcons, especially because a guy like Matt Gono, who I had my eye on this season as possibly a starter at that guard position, got injured and is on the injured reserve list right now. I definitely think that Jalen Mayfield possibly could, uh, could slide inside as best, basically because he's more athletic, as I mentioned before, than a guy like Caleb McGarry. I think Caleb McGarry would struggle at the guard position. I think Caleb McGarry is a guy mainly who can only play the tackle position. I don't believe that Caleb McGarry is a guy that you can slide inside. I think that Jalen Mayfield would be that guy um, like that Swiss Army knife where you can use him in many different positions on the offensive line. So I do believe eventually um, after camp, after preseason, when the smoke clears, I do think that Caleb McGarry will be the guy still left standing as that starting right tackle. Um, like I said, I do believe he'll play much better this year. Um, being that we're going to be a more run dominant team. I do think the Falcons are going to use play action and, you know, throw the ball down the field, but we're going to be less predictable. So teams can't pin their ears back and get after our offensive line like they have been the last two seasons. I really feel like last the last two seasons, the offensive line as a whole has kind of been laid out to dry and been thrown out there. 
Um, and we've been so predictable that teams could just pin their ears back. If you just go back and look at the games where we faced the Saints the last couple years, they've had multiple games where they've had seven and eight sacks in one game, um, which is basically a disgrace. And that's really goes uh, reflects on the offensive coordinator. You can't really place that on the at the feet of the offensive line when you're being predictable and you're running, the, uh, not running the ball and throwing the ball, you know, 40 and 50 times a game. You have to stay balanced in the NFL. You have to te- uh, keep teams off balance. And I think that Arthur Smith is going to do a good job of play calling. Um, he's going to do a good job of uh, running the football with that three to four headed monster we have in the backfield between Mike Davis, uh, Cordero Patterson, Quadre Olison, and Javion Hawkins. I really think that we're going to see a lot of quick screens. Um, you know, another thing we're going to see Matt Ryan get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. It's not going to be those long developing five step drops and seven step drops. That's another thing that kind of has played a part in, um, you know, the sacks that you, we've been giving up over the last season, the last couple seasons. It's I put it uh, a lot of this, um, a lot of the issues. I lay a lot of the issues at the feet of Dirk Cutter, the former offensive coordinator of our Atlanta Falcons of not. Um, you know, putting these guys in the best positions to succeed. And that's something that I say a lot on my channel is, you know, coaches or players, great players or good players can't overcome bad coaching. You know, that was said years ago. I believe it was Randy Moss that stated that. And that's something that we bring up a lot at Atlanta Falcons Nation between Mad Mike, me and K-Styles is that players, you know, great players can't overcome bad coaching, especially in the game of football where every position has to, um, you know, do their job um, in order to, you know, be successful in the passing game or be successful running the football. Everybody has to be on the same page. All 11 players have to be on the same page. If one or two guys are off on the offensive line or out of rhythm, that can, you know, mess up a whole play. So I definitely think that Caleb McGarry is a guy who will improve this season. Um, so to answer your question, be strong. I appreciate you dropping a question in the uh, in the chat or in the comment section of my last video. Um, I definitely think Caleb McGarry is a guy that will be much improved this season. And I think that the offensive line as a whole is going to be much improved and the offense is going to be much improved. Because if you look at the last couple seasons, the Falcons have been one of the worst teams in the red zone. And that goes back to play calling with Dirk Cutter not having an imagination um, as far as, you know, scripting plays and drawing up plays to get guys open and scheming players open. He did a poor job of doing that. He he basically relied on Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley and Matt Ryan's, um, you know, elite talent to try to overcome uh, great defensive coaches and great defensive schemes. So I do think that Arthur Smith bringing his great offensive scheme over to the uh, over to the Falcons, him bringing over that, um, you know, attitude that we're going to hit you in the mouth. We're going to hit first and we're not going to be passive and pass the ball, you know, 40 times a game. I really think that that's going to be huge for our Atlanta Falcons heading into this season. And it's also going to be huge in our red zone efficiency. I definitely think with Arthur Smith, a guy who's been at Tennessee, one of the stats that was one of the best stats for a guy like Arthur Smith and the Tennessee Titans, where they were the number one or two team in the last couple of years and red zone efficiency. When they got into the red zone, they scored touchdowns. And that's the way that you win football games in the NFL. When you get your opportunities uh, in the red zone to score touchdowns, you have to put seven on the board and not put three on the board. But with that being said, <clears throat> excuse me, with that being said, this be your boy, Ju. I'll holler at you guys in the next video. Um, this, um, as always, Falcons Nation, rise up. If you have another question that you guys may want me to do a video on, Definitely drop the comment below. Um, if you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Um, I'm definitely on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, also, go over to Atlanta Falcons Nation. Hit that subscribe button there as well. We're on the road to 2,000 subscribers there as well. But with that being said, this being your boy, Ju. As always, Falcons Nation, rise up. Peace.